<laughs> it's going to be a monologue. <laughs> so, okay, let's get this show going then. Um, I've got like 10 minutes, I guess. I have to hurry up. Anyway, so I'm here to talk about Speckle, I guess. Um, and Speckle is kind of an effort of reimagining the whole design process from the internet up. It's also, I'm gonna skip through the slides, that's why I'm keeping the presenter view open. So anyway, it's an exercise also in um, kind of people-oriented programming. So how to do design communication actually without, uh, without the complicated parts, right? So as we all know, you know, technology can dissolve barriers. This is one of the major, um, um, yeah, yeah. We, it's, it's the 21st century. We love Facebook, we love, uh, you know, Flickr, LinkedIn, so on and so forth. We're actually getting and, and are rather productive with things like GitHub or uh, Basecamp and so on and so forth. But my argument is that somehow in the case of, you know, in the case of what's going on in AEC, technology can also erect barriers. I mean, this is a general fact, actually. So, you know, before I, I used to work for like um, three years in an office in Brussels that was doing nothing very computational. It was all very bricks and mortar, like square buildings. And I was trying to push some agendas in terms of like, you know, we should do BIM. We should uh, we should actually look at all these intelligent workflows and, you know, get out of vector works, you know, get a few Revit licenses and, um, you know, start working like proper architects. Nevertheless, like when people actually, when, when my office actually was, was confronted with this, it was like a 20 people office, so rather small office. Oh, you can't hear. Oh, can you hear me now? Because <laughs> I've been having a monologue for the last three minutes. Okay, cool, cool, good. So anyway, so we were trying to do BIM and stuff, right? Uh, problem was the reaction was like this. This is a GIF. So people were freaking out because BIM was too complicated for them. And actually, you know, I couldn't push, I hope nobody has epilepsy back there. Anyway, so um, I couldn't push any kind of digital agenda in that office because most of the existing stuff were actually too complicated and I had a too, too high of a cost in terms of technological buying, essentially. So you have to imagine a 20 people office in Brussels, in Belgium, which is a very small country. Uh, but anyway, so that's when I realized that actually there's a bit of a digital divide when it comes to computational design techniques and to digital design collaboration. And when it comes to AEC, you know, there's a huge gap out there, uh, which actually, yes, leads to this kind of disenfranchisement of uh, stakeholders and exclusion of stakeholders from the design process. And this obviously doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't help us make better buildings. And my particular area of focus, I, I was lucky enough that after my experience in Brussels, I, I started actually in a uh, Marie Curie Fellowship uh, in London uh, within this program called InnoChain at the Bartlett. And my topic was specifically tackling this kind of communication issues, technological digital communication issues inside the design process, right? It's a very broad topic. But anyway, the, the important thing to bear, and this is like where kind of speckle, which some of you might have heard from uh, about before, uh, comes from, you know, communication is both technology, but it's also a social phenomenon, right? And I usually, as an example, what I usually show is this very simple public-private partnership diagram that we, we had for a big project, for an airport development project in Brussels. Initially, it's, uh, you know, you've got the government, you've got developers, and you've got architects. I can actually stream through this. So you've got the government, developers, and architects. But then when you actually start to unfold this thing, and then you see like, hey, actually, you've got uh, much more stakeholders. It's not just three people trying to understand each other around the table. And the best part is, is that, you know, some of these stakeholders have what I call multiple personality disease. So, you know, the government, you know, politicians want cool projects, but the real estate department says you don't get cool projects because they cost too much money. 
So essentially, nowadays this problem is compounded actually because you know I structure my information in one way, you structure your information in a different way, and then this is compounded by actually the tools that we're using, right? So each speciality uses its own software, um, or uses you know like engineers use uh, GSA and structural analysis software. I use Rhino. Uh, the architect uses Vectorworks, and so on and so forth. And this is how Speckle kind of got born out of this as a kind of um, really a shot in the dark into how actually, you know, just enabling the, how could you enable essentially a very simple, you know, sharing of geometry inside the AC, right? Sharing of geometry and data at the end of the day, right? So how could we do this in the most simplest basic way that, you know, harks back to, to things like Facebook Messenger and, and stuff like this, you know? So no extra complications, no uh, information exchange requirements, just send me a bunch of lines, right? Um, well, Speckle had a very rich history originally. It started off with um, that thing in the upper corner, the colorful thing, this thing. Uh, which was dubbed the Instagram of Grasshopper. Actually, you just uh, you would just like double click a component, and then you'd get a link to a mesh, to basically sorry to an online viewer in the cloud where you could see your your fancy Grasshopper design and spin around and add comments and so on and so forth. Then, of course, it being in Grasshopper, people wanted to have sliders, so it evolved to this kind of um, solution space explorer that was pre-computing the design space provided by a Grasshopper definition, and then you could explore this in multiple ways, again, online, so anyone could do this from their browser. And then, yes, even fancier interfaces strapped on this, like this pile coordinates things, and this is something like 2016, I think where you could actually see the trade-offs involved in, in, in the design process or in a design itself, which is quite cool. Um, but then one of my industry partners, aka McNeil, uh, the makers of Rhino, they actually saw that, hey, actually, you're doing this very cool thing, which for me at the time was kind of a side effect. I was like, yeah, you can live stream geometry in between multiple grasshopper things, right? So, wow, that's super cool. Uh, we should do more of this. And they also said, like, hey, you know, actually not everyone's using Rhino. Um, so that kind of set out the development agendas for Speckle to go beyond this kind of fancy online viewers and, and solution space explorers and so on and so forth. And slowly it evolved to what it is now or what it's trying to be now, which is an AC data communication platform. It has really three very simple things, like an API, which is a set of verbs, objects, which is geometry and data, and clients, which are people at the end of the day. Obviously, this is the, you know, this is the, the PR spiel. Essentially, we've got it working, integrated with Dynamo, with Grasshopper, Rhino itself, and yes, we've got online viewers. You can paste stuff in uh, Excel as well and so on and so forth. So the important thing that you should know is that to essentially to any kind of geometry element or any kind of object in Speckle can have anything attached to it in terms of metadata, including other objects and including uh, you know, price calculations and whatever you want. Uh, and we provided listing grasshopper tools for doing this. And on top of those things, you know, it's very easy to kind of, you know, start the speculative things of what you can do with Speckle online, you know, like from viewers to, you know, what I showed before in this parallels um, coordinates graph, exploring multiple solutions, to very complicated uh, and detailed pavilions from airports. Um, and you have to understand, this is from design to production. They're a very cool company, you should look them up. Um, but you have to understand, so every single, the way they're using Rhino is rather special. So every single geometry that you see, every single rep and beam that you see in there has embedded in it, in a way or another, like already manufacturing instructions. So what kind of machine is going to cut this from what type of wood, what inclinations and the actual G-code and stuff. And this all goes through Speckle easily, essentially. Um, in case you haven't seen it before, this is how it looks like in Grasshopper. So essentially, you've got like two very basic components. Uh, you know, you, you plug data in and then you get data out. I'm going to skip through it. 
so you can rename things easily. Uh, we're trying to be as real time as possible, but that's optional. So you can always pause and you know do your stuff. Um, right. So this is the Grasshopper plugin. This is Matteo from Arup who did the Dynamo plugin. So basically, this allows you to stream data from Dynamo to Dynamo and from Grasshopper to Dynamo or from Dynamo to Grasshopper, back and forth. Essentially, we're trying to rebuild slowly as demand increases uh, Flux functionality, right, in short. And we've also got this amazing Rhino plugin that I'm rather proud of, to be honest, because uh, you'd be surprised, but from what I remember from my conversations with people at McNeil, the percentage of people actually you know, using Grasshopper within Rhino, within the total, let's say, uh, Rhino users worldwide is something like around 20% or something like this. I don't remember if this is correct, but uh, it's a minority of people, right? So then we obviously have, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've integrated it straight with Rhino and the ambition is to do this, the same thing with other software as well. Um, right, I'm gonna skip a bit through this video. So yeah, I mean, this is sped up a bit, but it's kind of real time. It kind of shows what you can do when you start from scratch. You're not uh, compounded to, uh, you know, very costly updating processes and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, and of course you can, you know, once you have this geometry in Rhino, you can stream it back in Grasshopper, edit it, get it back in Rhino, or get it back in Dynamo. So you can assemble pretty much whatever workflow you want. Uh, yeah, and this is the aforementioned pavilion, which is something like uh, 300 megabytes of breps coming from Rhino. And as you see, it takes a while to for initially for it to load, but then afterwards it goes quite smooth. So I'm quite happy. Um, yes, and people actually, so Matthew, this is Matthew, this guy here. He um, He's kind of in charge of the online viewer now, more or less, when he has time. But he actually customized it to actually, you know, build tables. So he has a grasshopper definition that does tables in the background. And you know it's quite cool because you know you 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 at the end of the day you get to see the real project actually getting out. So the potential for these things are quite crazy. Anyway, so um, now we're getting a little bit more political. Uh, we're saying like yeah, everything is uh, open source and MIT. So I've been funded so far by public money essentially. So I decided also to give back everything I'm doing. Um, but with a twist, you know, so, I mean, you could replace Speckle in this slide with uh, Flux.com and we all not know what happened to Flux, I guess. The thing is that's not the model that, uh, that I had in mind, being a little bit of a socialist or something, I don't know, which is surprising because I come from a very, you know, from a, I, I, I have memories from the communist regime in Romania, that's where I'm from, so anyway. But the model is that anyone can just, you know, you own the means of production. So anyone can take the server and deploy it however they see fit in their company, either locally or if they want to actually open it up to the internet, you know, start looking into cloud providers and do it via that. So all with the idea, you know, to, to empower people, to empower designers and architects, engineers, and so on and so forth to, you know, own the, share the, da own the data that they, uh, they produce and share it however they see fit, and also impose no software tax. And this is a discussion about rich data. So I'm going to skip through some of these slides. Um, Speckle has, yes, basically several data structures that it operates with, like a flat data streams, which are simply a collection of objects. Um, but based on this collection of objects, you can do, so there's an API for actually versioning or history, depends on how you want to use it. Um, there's an also like the API can handle queries, so you can actually ask the server after you've uploaded stuff, um, hey, can you give me these objects which have the following property in between this and that? And the cool thing is, you know, yeah, you can assemble these uh, queries in your browser, so there's nothing really magic or dark in there. And the nice thing is that actually, so once you create this data, this is a very short video. So once you create this data, and then you can actually essentially import it into Excel, and then you get a, a live link to your Grasshopper or Dynamo geometry or whatever you want into Excel. 
uh, unidirectional though, you know. So you change that basically while it's moving along, and then you refresh. You got your new set of, uh, you know, I don't know, panel information. And then yes, you can do fancy visualizations. Now objects. These are. This is a bit of where it gets political because um, there's a lot of discussion. You know, like the bubble tower. You know, construction. Wow. Everyone speaks very many languages actually, essentially in this business. And so far, we've been. I'm being provocative on purpose right now, right? So uh, everyone's, you know, the drive was like to unify everything within this one complete standard called IFC. Uh, obviously, this doesn't really work because it's a very kind of top-down approach with very little potential for bottom-up or like very little channels in which bottom-up things can bubble up in this standard. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, I'm also writing a PhD thesis. thesis. So this is something complicated. Communication wants to be optimally relevant, which means it's kind of always reducing itself, you know, once we're talking to each other in between each other. Uh, and one complete standard cannot handle that, actually. So the approach that Speckle takes is like, uh, you've got a very simple set of basic primitives, which are like, you know, um, okay, Boolean numbers, strings, and some standard geometry uh, items, what you would expect, uh, which look like this. Oh no, I'm skipping some slides. Actually, let me just check. So yeah, okay, we're good. Whoop. So this is actually, surprise, surprise, this is a John Merchant um, IFC object actually coming straight out of Grasshopper. I think some of my slides got marked up, but there you go. Yeah, I was expecting this first. But essentially, if you know John Merchant and Geometry Gym, he's doing a wonderful job of actually delivering a very functional and usable implementation of IFC. Uh, that's to a certain extent open source, but not really. Anyway, but uh, this is John actually sending uh, IFC objects that he defines in Grasshopper uh, through Speckle online and then getting them back out in, in Revit. And this is kind of the Speckle abstract approach, uh, which means that I essentially don't care about your higher level schema, but I will try. I will do my best to support it and to transmit it natively. So I'm I'm going to reflect on it and so on. And as long as like the classes and ob uh, as long as the object model is defined in a certain way, everything's good, right? So this has been tested with uh, Bureau Hapel's internal um, object schema and with uh, Dialog Design from Canada's object schema. So yeah, I'm ending like, uh, you know, there is, you know, you don't really, I mean, having one standard is very stifling and, you know, there, there is no easy way to just get one standard to rule them all. Um, final message of this section would be essentially, again, empowerment and build your own BIM, you know, essentially. So if you are discussing certain things with your contractors in a certain way, feel free to optimize that and create custom objects that everyone can make sense of. Anyway, communication flow. So this is actually, again, a bit of a technical discussion, but not, yeah funkily illustrated, hopefully. So if you imagine the design process with all the actors involved in it, like a grasshopper graph, right? But instead of a grasshopper graph, right, you have a, um, you know, some of the nodes become humans, right? All these humans use like various pieces of software that they need to use because that's where they're doing their jobs. Um, well, with Speckle, you can actually track uh within one server you can track actually who's talking to whom and on what and this is very interesting because you it helps a lot with like um this thing called concurrent engineering and you know uh parallelizing tasks so you can see actually what can happen at the same time if something changed what needs to be updated what are the bottlenecks what are the feedback loops in the design process as well so you know what's your agile methodology in there <laughs> Um, and as well, this also kind of leads towards the discussion around automation, essentially. So once you have this overview, you can actually see a little bit where these little things 
you know, maybe someone's just sitting all day long in front of their computers, importing one Revit file into a structural analysis pro uh, program and pressing one button to run an analysis. Well, that's that's something that's called automation, right? So you can integrate, the point is that you can integrate uh, essentially technical actors as well. So not just human actors, but technical actors within the design process. And you can imagine things like, um, you know, like checking your designs while you sketch or while you push. You know, if we've got this thing called continuous integration in programming, which is super cool. Like whenever I commit some code to, for example, the Speckle Rhino uh, plugin, and this is thanks to Will Pearson from McNeil. Anyway, uh, like a little robot in the background goes on and compiles my code and tells me if there's any errors or not runs the tests and tells me if there's any errors. Uh, this is how the technical side looks. Um, this is how it would be translated into a more human message, let's say. Uh, the point is that clients can send custom messages to each other, so you can customize this technically if you want to. So for example, hey, is there anything that can do a wind analysis out there or a flooding analysis out there? Yes, I can do, cool. Can you analyze this setting? Yes, here you go, there you are, there are your results, you know? So again, it's structured around this thing, why I wanna call it like empowerment. You can make your own clients. So you're not uh, strictly, you know, you're not, uh, bound to you know send and receive or to push and pull you can actually do whatever you want um yeah and this is a nice part actually so speckle also like kind of became an open community and this was kind of if i were to be honest this was kind of probably pretty much around 60 percent of the work was not writing code but actually or you know actually enabling and trying to coagulate this um, community of interested people and developers and contributors and so on and so forth so one year and a half ago i was chatting with luis fraguada from mcneil on 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 facebook and we're now kind of hacking at speckle together like now we're 350 people on slack which is kind of wow a lot uh from basically a project in which i was committing kind of alone now it, it went a bit crazy with uh, these are kind of the main contributors that I want to give shout outs to that helped out uh, Matteo from uh, Arup, uh, Alvaro from Brighton Wood in London. He helped uh, these two help on the Dynamo plugin. I mean, basically, they developed the Dynamo plugin. Matthew worked on the viewer and got it to where it is right now. Luis helped tons uh, on the um, on the Rhino plugin and on the Rhino backend of things like previewing geometry and all that stuff and we'll basically set up our whole building infrastructure you know how we build stuff and uh, continuous integration everything's on github so feel free to join and poke around and uh, you know if you see problems or if you want to raise issues or whatever or if you want to just have fun do join us and yeah as a reminder speckle is uh, open source and yeah now now these are my ending quotes there's a bit of a series of like kind of cheesy messages that i try i'm trying to deliver this is a quote actually from um, 1997 whoops sorry from uh, kevin kelly and you know he said in 1997 that actually the value of computers lies more actually in the in the connections that they enable between people rather than the computations that those computers actually do I mean, obviously, back then there was no, uh, you know, there was no cryptocurrency rush. Uh, but I still believe that what he says it's true. Uh, that there's a lot of value of kind of if we step outside of this computational box and we look at this kind of what kind of um, social aspects we can get back out of computers. It's really wonderful. And essentially, Speckle is kind of a vision for the, um, yeah for the future of the industry or how the industry should work like in terms of software and in terms of like how you know politically stakeholders should be involved aka you the users but it's also something in which i want to say like we should embrace the, the diversity and the richness of the of the construction industry and of architecture and of engineering you know they're there it's very difficult to come up with one language um and you know 
make together collaboratively make you know digital infrastructure for collaboration you know because this is what's going to lead at the end of the day to a digitally integrated built environment that actually should work for everyone you know and not just uh, for the many not the few you know to quote label okay so that's it that's my spiel that's my monologue do you have any questions? If you do, please write them down or send me an email because I can't hear you, which is super frustrating, actually. Hmm. Or type them in this chat thingy that we have with, uh, with our GoToWebinar thing. Otherwise, thanks, and I'm sorry to be a bit, yeah, 10 minutes over my time. I hope it was good and you could hear me out. Can you hear me, Dimitri? Oh, yes. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> we can end up the monologue. Also, thanks a lot. Sorry for, for the inconvenience. It's no perfect. Problem. Thanks a lot for everyone. Um, <laughs> so do we have some couple of questions? Like uh, someone here in the audience? No? OK, yeah. Uh, I haven't used it before, but I use it once. Uh, uh, does, do I need to just install uh, components and components? Yeah. So, uh, can you read the question? Do you want me to repeat? Or? If you can repeat it, because I didn't get half of yeah, it. Yeah, so um, how the people can get started. I think there is a really great Slack channel for start and get engaged yeah. with the community. But also, uh, yeah, for install a Speculo, uh, I mean, We've just got actually, so Matteo just wrote, um, so on speckle.works, uh, you go to log and then you see the speckle guide. And Matteo just wrote a nice guide on how to get started with uh, basically installing the components for Rhino and Dynamo and, you know, going through all. Can you still see my screen? Maybe not. Yes, anyway. yes. Perfect. Yes, okay. Cool. So you've got kind of uh, the guidelines in there on how to get started. And otherwise, uh, you know, there's the forum <laughs> where you can ask questions. Uh, and as well, if you want more real time kind of things, uh, we have the Slack channel. So where you can invite yourself. So Awesome. And Mitri, I have a question because uh, you're going to present the first day of Autodesk University. Is it correct? No, I'm not. Matteo is going to be there, actually. OK, but he's going to be present speckle, right? And you're going to have an end-on workshop. Um, I don't know what he planned, actually, though we okay. just uh, we got quite drunk last last night. Uh, but I, I didn't ask what he's going to do <laughs> for the speckle, okay. for the, sorry, for the Autodesk University. But I'm sure, like, if you have questions and if you're at uh, Autodesk University, like, do, do hunt Matteo down. He's going to hate me for this. Anyway, hunt Matteo down and ask him questions. He's going to be able to answer them. So, awesome. So, uh, right now, I think Speckle is a community based uh, product, right? We can define yeah. like that on a really interoperability at the center. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thanks a lot. We are hoping to provide any support also from here as soon as possible and be cool. more engaged with the product. Sure. Okay. Cool. Have fun, guys. Yeah. Thanks. Bye -bye. Take care. Thank you as well. Thank you, Dimitri. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, See you next time. Um, I'm going to speak